this time... I have to do 100 things at once. ..an owner on the edge. To come so close to losing it, yeah, it's, it's been pretty tough. ..with a message in a bottle. Look at that. That's a first for me. It is, to me, a sign that you don't have a grip. <laughs> I've been sent a recce tape from a lady called Nina, who owns and runs a pub with rooms called the Grove Arms, right on the border of Wiltshire and Dorset, quite near Shaftesbury. Um, I wanted to see it because she sounds pretty desperate. It sounds heartfelt. And I want to see if there's something I can do to help her. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Three years ago, Nina Bartlett gave up a successful legal career in the city to return home to the country and follow her dream. Local girl running a local business. In theory, it can't get better than that. How is Mum? How are you getting on? Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. yeah, good. The Grade 2 listed Grove Arms is a small, dog-friendly pub with a restaurant and six AA four-star rated bedrooms, run entirely by Nina. My vision for the Grove's always been that bustling country pub, for it to be a happy place, for a happy place for staff, happy place for customers. And not forgetting their four-legged friends. Betty looks like she's very, very settled there. I've got my dog Buddy. Buddy is a key part to the business as well. Working in the kitchen is old family friend Sue. Courtney, can you grab me some fries, bud? She will happily tell you herself she's not a head chef. She's a cook. This is my domain. I like being in here, so Sue in the kitchen is a good place. But despite a good turnover, last year the Grove suffered a £1,000 loss, with room booking seeing room for manoeuvre. Got any bookings today? It's quiet and no business can sustain that. To just be sort of bumbling along, it kind of dents your passion, really. With Nina struggling to stamp her authority, Nina's a very relaxed boss, and there's no pressure from Nina. I don't think I'm being strict enough and driven enough with the staff. Do you want me to drive for you to have a break, or would you rather, would you rather be in control? I really don't. Taking on needless tasks is taking up time. I'm chief of the kitchen. I was in the middle of paperwork five minutes ago, and now I'm trying to get someone's food out the door. I'm chief on the bar. Anything else for you? Chief, literally, of the product as a whole. And that's an absolute classic interruption. Good morning, the Grove Arms. The whole experience has left her overwhelmed and overloaded. It's really, really hard running a pub, particularly on my own. That's absolutely fine. Can I take a name? There's only so much that can go on one person's shoulders. Um, you, you're just exhausted. Is there a, a firm strategy in place at the moment as to what I want to achieve over the next year? No, there can't be. I, I don't sit down long enough to make one. I'm firefighting most days, if not every day. I'm going to lose my sanity on a really serious note and it's going to destroy my family life if I don't do something. Gosh, well, <laughs> she seems genuinely at a loss of which way to turn and what to do next. Clearly, Nina is at the end of her tether. I urgently need to see for myself what's gone wrong with the Grove. Hi. Nina. Hi. I'm Alex. Nice Very to nice meet you. to meet you. Thank you. I think the best thing is that we sit down straight away okay. and I get a bit of the backstory so I understand what the problems are. Shall we? Where should we start? Come on over. Thank you. Right, so what on earth made you think that it was a good idea to buy this place? Because I thought it's a great location, perfect country pub. I thought I could make a difference. Did you look at the figures of no. what they. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Gosh. OK. What do you think your strengths are and what do you think your weaknesses are? Managing the team is definitely a weakness, I think. And what have you done since you've been here to change things? I've tried to have various staff changes to try and make the financials work, so I don't have an assistant manager, general manager, head chef. So we're operating a business without these. What do these. you have? I have some, a great team. 
blind ambition and a lack of leadership are hardly foundations for a successful business. Let's hope the Grove's four-star accommodation is something to build on. Really anxious about Alex being upstairs. Because when you take on a pub, it's your baby. You spend more time here than you do in your own bedroom. So if she really comes in and, and sort of lays down the law, it's, it's, it's quite personal because everything about it is personal to me. Bed and breakfast is from £75, which is competitively priced for the area. So I'm expecting a competitive standard of accommodation. So, pretty plain, not particularly overwhelming. Um, you know, it's pretty old-fashioned, I would suggest. I mean, I would have thought this was a £50 a night room. However, we have a chest of drawers. There is, however, a flaw in the equipment. With one hand she gives and with the other she takes away. And it's frankly something I've never seen before. <laughs> I must admit, I find all this quite depressing. You know, people are always putting fucking cushions everywhere. I can't bear it. This shows that she's not completely on the ball. And I think that she's possibly been frittering away her money on useless objects when she needs to concentrate on the bigger picture. Interesting. Once again, cushions, cushions everywhere. And this incredibly irritating habit that people still have of putting towels on the bed. You don't use towels in the bedroom. You use towels in the bathroom. That's where they belong. I've been saying it for 10 years and people still don't listen to me. But, you know, I feel depressed that she's making such an effort, clearly, but it's not really working. I think poor Nina's trying to polish a turd, frankly, you know. I mean, what is this all about? I mean, decoration, a couple of pebbles. I, I hate this, this sign. I mean, first of all, welcome. What? Well, welcome to your bathroom. And then I hate what she's done it on, the pebbles and that. Now I'm depressed. Perhaps Nina's flagship room will lift my spirits. Despite being here three years, a lack of funds means it's the only room to have been refurbished. Uh... I hope she likes what she sees in room five. If not, I think I'm going to be quite, quite hurt by that because that was my choice. You know, you wouldn't walk in here and go, wow, what a fantastic room. Oh, like that, would you? You've got one tiny bedside table. Why? You've got room for two. What, your one's not allowed to read when the other doesn't want to kind of thing. It's so irritating. How often does she go into rooms and check them? Or every time she's depressed, does she just go out and buy another pillow? My overwhelming feeling as I walk around the rooms is one of frustration because there is this kind of veneer of respectability under which everything is all pretty useless. Look at that. The kind of, oof, there's dust inside the bottle. Uh, that's a first for me. What is it with the pebbles in the windowsills and all the cushions and the bad space planning, the chest of drawers that doesn't open, the dusty bottle of water, for goodness sake? You just feel like she bought this a bit on a whim and now she's struggling to know how to make it a success. And without clarity of vision, she's never going to achieve it. I think this will be exhibit A when I go downstairs for Nina. It's disgusting. I've checked into the Grove Arms on the Wiltshire Dorset border. Take care. Bye. Thank you. A country inn failing to pull a profit, with owner Nina feeling the pressure. As you can see, they can be lively. And on the brink of burnout. I don't want to see it fail. 
to come so close to losing it. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty tough. I've taken a close inspection of the four-star accommodation, which is more than could be said for manager Nina. I don't know what I was expecting in the rooms, but I was disappointed. Do you check the rooms after your staff have been around them? No, I haven't been. Why? Because of the confrontation. <gasps> I think that they're 90% OK. 90% simply won't cut it in this game, as I bring to the table Exhibit A. This is in a bedroom. Can you see where the... God. I mean, darling, that is in the room that you've done. I mean, that is disgusting. You're employing people who need to be kept up to the mark and doing their jobs properly. You're paying these people. I mean, I know that that isn't what isn't making your business successful, but it is, to me, a kind of sign that you don't have a grip. And I know you're tired, and it's hard for you because you've put your heart and soul into this, but you're going to have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and find another gear. With wages accounting for half of Nina's outgoings, she clearly employs enough staff. But are they getting enough direction? Some decisions that are made are slightly immature. Knock, knock, knock. Hello? Someone who I think may need better management is Sue, responsible for the kitchen and the restaurant's four-page menu. My initial impression is it, it's just a big menu. Yes, there is a lot of stuff on the menu. Does anyone keep track of what sells and what doesn't sell and how many portions? Or does no. It... No, we don't have... I don't have any ideas of how many goes out. I would imagine Nina would if she looks at the tickets. And what's your food GP? Do you work to one? We work to one, definitely. Um, it went down 1% uh, and it's back up to 63. Obviously, I'd like it more than that, but this is new to me, so I'm just trying to, you know, work out how to do it. It is really hard to make money in the food and beverage industry. And one way to make sure that you have at least a fighting chance is to ensure that you have the right gross profit on your dishes. In its simplest form, that means that there's enough of a margin between the cost of the ingredients and the price you ask people to pay for their meal. And if Nina won't get a grip on the menu, I will. First, I need to know which dishes sell and which ones don't. Great. So, I want to make sure that the five top items are actually making their GP and that the least selling items are the ones we take off. Yeah? Agreed. So, have you had a look? Main courses, it's fish and chips, ham, egg and chips, beef burgers, the pie and the rump steaks. All traditional pub grub. So that gives you a really clear picture of who your customer is already. Let's make your life easier and more profitable. I would love to know on those top selling items what your GP is. Knowing every portion on the menu is profitable is one less thing for Nina to worry about, allowing more time to focus on the rest of the business. We're going to have to ask for Charles' portion. Second. Charles' portion. I mean, it really is too much. Well, I mean, I think that was a pretty good first day. She looked like a rabbit in the headlights when I had the conversation with her. You could just see her eyes darting everywhere, thinking, you know, what, how am I going to do this? What do I do first? I feel really sorry for her, but my feeling sorry for her isn't going to help. I think I'm just daunted at the minute, sort of stood here now after a long day, thinking, wow, this is just as big a task that I took on three years ago. And it certainly feels like three years has been rolled into about 15 minutes, to be honest. Every so often, I meet someone who's simply in over their heads and needs a lifeline. The only way forward is to take Nina back to page one of the hospitality manual. And the next morning, I'm encouraged to see my student is already on top of her homework. Hello, hello. Hi, Alex. So how have you been getting on with this stuff? 
Um, quite good, actually. So I had a look at what we were selling, what we weren't selling, and pinpointed the burger, the ham, egg and chips and the fish and chips as being our top sellers on the main yeah. courses. GPs are looking quite strong on all three of those items. That's great. So that's some positive news. In the region of 79. It means that you've got lots of items on that menu that are dragging it down. Already, that identifies a way for you to make more money. I think the next immediate thing to tackle is I want to show you some of the problems in the rooms. So why don't we start in the room that I was in last night? Absolutely. OK? OK. Let's go. For Nina to be able to start thinking about the bigger picture, first she must focus on the fundamentals. Right, darling, so this is the room I stayed in last night. This is the worst. I mean, there's not one drawer you can actually open. Mm. So I feel as if you've never stayed in this room. I haven't. You've never tried to use it as a guest? No. These are just details, but it's details that show that you're not very focused. OK, come into the bathroom, please. Come this side and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All this water staining, all this takes is someone passing a dry cloth over it. Mm -hmm. Then over here, this is not a clean shelf. You know, it pains me to say this to you because it's not like it is filthy. It is just like it's somehow the attention to detail is really missing. And when you don't have a great product, that attention to detail matters even more. I think I know where the problem lies. It's interesting to me that you're kind of nervous about tackling staff. Yeah. Please tell me if I'm wrong, but is it just because you're tired and ground down and you just don't want anyone to leave and rock the boat any further? Rocking the boat is something I'm absolutely terrified of because if I rock the boat, then I invariably I end up cleaning the rooms, which I haven't got time to do. I really don't understand why Nina's so afraid of upsetting her staff. She's the boss, and what staff need from their boss is direction and leadership. Yeah, go and get some. Quite frankly, I've got no idea how she's got as far as she has. But Nina's obviously not a lost cause. I just have to find the spark again. And outside, first impressions aren't much better. In an area where pubs with rooms are ten a penny, Nina must clearly promote the Grove's true current offering. I want this to go. I think this is not the message that we want to be conveying. And somehow they've ruined the facade of this lovely old building with a country coffee lounge sign up on the wall as well. Alarmingly, a failed venture Nina abandoned over a year ago, but the signs remain. This is basically their shop front. This is where they get to grab people's attention. And people flying by at speed only have a chance to register one or two immediate messages. And I don't think it's a country coffee lounge. Nina has tried virtually everything. She's not really sure what her identity is. She's very confused. And the worst thing is now, not only is she confused, but she's confusing her guests. What is it that she's trying to achieve at the Grove? What is it that she wants to offer? Welcome to your schizophrenic offering. <laughs> <laughs> it's collage. It's very confusing. This is what you are asking people to buy into. I mean, it looks like you have a different font for every occasion. <laughs> so why would people come here? Who is this going to attract that this isn't going to attract? We need to find you a pretty font, mm -hmm. a pretty way of headlining things, and keep it consistent. Mm. If you're sure what you're doing, everything will reflect that much better, and then you will appeal to the people who will come to you again and again. And once we get this right, we get the food offering right, we get the rooms right, they're all singing from the same hymn sheet, mm. I assure you, you're going to get more custom. There's a lot to do there, definitely. Along with creating a clear identity, I want Nina to put quality and leadership back into the Grove. So I'm giving you quite a few tasks. Simplification of the menu. Make sure that your gross profits are right on all the food. Yeah. That you have a mission statement. Mm -hmm. And then we have to make sure that you transmit your ideas to your staff. Never had a staff meeting. 
No. And so I think it would be nice to do. I need to make you a stronger manager for yourself, not mm. for even for your staff. OK, darling, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Bye. Thank See you, you soon. Take care. Well, that has been a very interesting couple of days. I've, I think, you know, we've accomplished a lot here. So it's two smoked habit, table six. Now she is much more clear about the direction of travel and about what she has to do to finally arrive where she wants to be. My only worry is, can she pull it off? Without a mission statement, Nina can't lead her team efficiently. And that's what I need to tackle next. The idea of having a staff meeting with the entire team and Alex present as well at the moment still feels like my ultimate nightmare. The Grove Arms in Ludwell, a dog-friendly country inn with rooms and an overwhelmed owner, Nina, who I'm taking back to basics. Because of the situation I'm in, I have to do a hundred things at once. It's not ideal. I hope. I hope. But since my first visit, there's been a rapid response and signs of improvement. Quite a lot of change has happened in the last couple of weeks, all positive. I started costing the menus, and it kind of spiralled from there. Coming in today, room one and room two, and there's a change in attitude, with Nina manning up to staff and beginning to dish out more duties. Like last week, I did the beer order by myself, which I thought I'd have a go at, and Nina checked it with me, and I felt like I did something worth doing. It's a positive start, although some changes may take a little more time. At the moment, the cushions are staying. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm worried that Nina has very little time to nail the Grove's identity. In this part of the world, to attract more business, she needs to stand out from the crowd. Hi, yes. So I've sent her to get advice from a design agency, armed with her new mission statement. I wanted it to be something that was personal to myself, personal as to what I wanted this place to be. So for me, it has got to be the welcoming, cosy locals in with a simple but quality offering. It sounds like what you really need is a cohesive brand that you can use across everything you're currently offering, marketing-wise. Yeah, just looking to use the logo with the black dog on it, which is my dog, Buddy, and that's really integral to the actual Grove. OK. But what do our experts think of featuring Buddy? Getting a pet in there is a good angle. You could use um, Instagram as well. Instagram for food and dogs yeah, is probably like two of the top trending hashtags. Cute pictures of dogs go down a tree. <laughs> and if you try and include the logo on everything that you produce, it just gives it a little bit more cohesion. Perhaps building Buddy the dog into the brand could pay dividends. Bye. I'm pleased Nina is looking at something clear and current to help her stand out. The task now is conveying the new identity to the team. Just one of my challenges as I return to the Grove. Quite high up on my list of priorities is that she's done the costings on the food. And I'm very keen for her to cut down the menu. I would love to see, too, that she's started to tackle the very odd signage at the front of her establishment. Finally, and very importantly, she needs to tackle her management skills. She needs to stop being scared of her staff. And when I arrive, early signs are encouraging. Aha! That looks good. Hi, darling. Hi, how are you? Mm, I'm very happy to see the signs coming down. They are. Long time coming. Oh, hooray. Well done. Thank you. Right, let's go in and see what else we've done. So what have you got for me? Lots of change. Yay! Well, the start of change. I love lots of change. So we met the designers and went through some ideas on a new logo. We're looking at having the menus now branded properly as well, and we've gone down to only four starters. A lot more pub choice, pub classic. 
focusing on our burger range. Yeah. And then on the reverse of it, I'm going to have something saying that we're dog friendly, but obviously with cute buddy. And then I've been out of food development day, so we're looking at having proper portions rather than just Darling, cheap, that's horrible so ones. Nice. They look great. And they look so much more what we're about. I mean, they are really smart. I've never seen them before, by the way. <laughs> well done. Darling. So, uh, yeah. It's Have you been... found it rewarding? When you actually see those changes, you just feel just rejuvenated, really. Gosh, well, I'm really pleased with how Nina's done so far. She seems to have really grasped the nettle and has definitely got it. She's definitely got a bit of vim and vigour about her. That's two scampies for two. And I think, really, the only thing left to do is to make sure that she's bringing all the staff along with her. I'm not ready yet, babe. With Sue yeah. managing the kitchen, it's vital she knows how to cost a meal and for Nina to be confident it's making money. So I'm going to show her how to calculate gross profit, or GP, using their classic burger dish. So I always start with the main thing, which is this. So this is how much. That's eight ounces. What we need then is the price of the mince. So we take the price in kilos and divide it then down into the grams which then gives us the cost per burger, and it comes out with the 81p per burger. So we've then got the base cost. Then you do the same process. You How many bits of... You do one bit of bacon. Yep. So then it's easy. If there's 18 yep. slices in a pack, you divide the price pack by 18 yep. to find out what one slice is. Yep. So you then add on 20% VAT, and that works out how much your actual cost is to put on a table. Right, OK. I really want you to get your head around this. I will. Because otherwise, what one does is, especially as you become more confident, you want to change a menu, you want to put things on, it's really important to then design a dish, look at what it costs you, look at what you might have to put it on the menu at, yeah. and work out if people, your customers, are going to want to pay that kind of price for yeah. it. Because yeah. if they're not, there's no point putting it on the bloody menu. No. I can sense Nina's confidence growing, but will it be enough to face her biggest fear? leading her team with their first staff meeting. So I think the missing element to all this wonderful stuff that you've done is I want to yeah. somehow involve the staff. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important that you talk to them about the direction of travel. Try and get them all to throw something in the pot. It's really good for them then to feel involved with the process of all this. If Nina is to maximise efficiency and achieve her goals, mm -hmm. it's vital she now demonstrates strong leadership. Hello, hello, gang. Hello. So, right. Nina, over to you. Over to me. For me, personally, going and walking into that meeting was absolutely terrifying. That was the part of the day that I just thought, oh, God. But to move forward, they've got to be an integral part of it. They're a major part of it. I thought it was about time through this process that we gave you a little bit of an update on where we're at and what you all think you can do to help me. Okay. Mm. One of the first things I was asked to do was to come up with a mission statement for The Grove. And what we came up with was a welcoming, cosy locals in with a simple but quality offering to both man and his four-legged friends. And that's where we're aiming to go. Realistically, the pet market is huge. There's a lot of places around here that say they're doggy friendly. Yeah. How can we make a point of difference? When they come in, show them where the dog bowls are, if they want to drink or the dogs want some water. That's a very good idea. Do you have bedding for dogs? No. They usually bring their own beds with them, but I think it's certainly worth having something in the bedrooms for dogs. Mm. We offer the owners tea, coffee and that up in the room, so what about something for the dog? That's a great idea. Yeah. I love that well idea. Well done, Matt. You should do something for the room folder. Dog walking maps. Dog walking. Yes. 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 Well, I think what we want is for someone to come here and think, oh, my gosh, not only is the bed, the bed comfortable, and they've really thought about how to make my dog welcome too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah? But, you know, you could really try and corner that aspect of the market. Well done, all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that was amazing. I mean, honestly, it shows how much the team appreciated the communication. That here now is, is a pretty good feeling that not only have we achieved a lot in only two and a half weeks, they're actually on board with it. I think it's grown us quite a close bond as well between particularly myself, Matt, Heather and Sue. But for Nina's vision to really work, she must put it out to market and road test her offer. 
So I've arranged some dog owners and their four-legged friends to stay and experience the reinvigorated Grove Arms. I don't own a dog and I never have, so I'm not part of that world. However, I'd find it hard to argue with the fact of how lucrative an industry it is. With a clear direction of where Nina wants to target her market, I want guests to appreciate the care and attention to detail in the bedrooms. So I'm taking on two rooms to show Nina how to freshen them up and add personality in keeping with the dog-friendly theme. And with no time to lose, the cushions are finally culled. OK, what can I get for you? And in the restaurant... Here we are, ladies. The stripped-down menu is already proving popular. Chocolate brownie, sir? There you go. Keeping the bar and the kitchen busy. Two lamb shanks, one fish fingers, one sausage, one, two beef, one scampi, one turkey. How are you getting on? Having Nina back as a boss like she should be, I've seen a big difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and breathe. Two weeks later, it's judgment day. So Barclay's allowed throughout the building. That's All right, so you. in the room, down for breakfast, in the main bar for dinner. My plan was for the Grove to find a niche in the dog-friendly accommodation market. And who have we got here? Daisy. Hello, Daisy. With Nina firmly taking the lead. Hi there. Come on over. How are we all? Hello. This is Tegan. Hi, Tegan. How are you? What I'm hoping is that Nina has gone that extra mile, because the truth is that there are a lot of people out there trying to do this kind of thing. And if you want to get your share of that market, you have to be doing it at least as well as they are. If you've bought dinner for Tegan in the room, that's not a problem at all. We've also got the doggy dinner down here okay. as well that we all offer. Right. And then we've got the Mutt's menu, which is just on the wall to here. There's a doggy bed over here with his blanket, all right. Oh, look at that! And there's some doggy prosecco for him. Oh my goodness! He likes that. You've got um, the ensuite just through there. Your yep. tea, coffee facilities, and then there's the water bowl there. So pop oh, some and fresh water. And you've got their little prosecco for them oh, as well. Thank all you. right. Are you gonna get drunk? In the kitchen, Sue has perfected the portions for guests and their furry friends. Tomorrow we're doing doggy breakfast, which is sausages, black pudding, and it gets served with the breakfast as they go out. So um, as, the, as the customers get their breakfast, so does the doggies. And Heather is doing whatever it takes. I don't like dogs. Doing this is delightful. But as the guests begin to settle in... Oh, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Unbeknownst to Nina and the team, I've arranged to check in a mystery guest who could ultimately make or break the revitalised Grove Arms. Hi there. Come on in. The Grove Arms in Ludwell is being put to the test to see if it can collar a corner of the dog-friendly accommodation market. Oh, going to sit. Last night was a full house as I've arranged for all the rooms to be occupied by guests and their furry friends. <laughs> Generally, we don't have six dogs in at one time. We usually have, like, you know, a few dogs in with their owners. Interesting. <laughs> Nina's looking confident, taking it all in her stride. <laughs> well, at least someone's awake this morning, anyway. <laughs> but is unaware she's under the scrutiny of my mystery guest, Gracia Amico, chief executive of Pets Pajamas. I've never had black pudding before. Yeah, a successful pet lifestyle website recommending the UK's best dog-friendly hotels. My aim is to have the Grove on that potentially profitable list. 
This part of the business is actually very lucrative for hotels because people, once they go to a hotel and the dog is just as welcome as they are, they will stay and they will have an extra drink in the bar, they will eat definitely at the hotel, they won't go to the nearest pub. So these people with dogs spend a lot more than other people might do. If Nina can prove to be the perfect host... Anything else I can get at all? She could be in for a slice of the hound pound. Dogs right. love the breakfast. Bless them. They're so sweet. With the dog vacation well underway, I'm back for my final visit. Hello, hello. Hi, Hi Alex. What a lovely day. day, aren't we? Blessed with the weather. It's beautiful out there. Tell me what's been happening. So the main change has been in, in the actual team. They've been really embracing sort of the whole process and taking on a lot more responsibility. Menus? Menus are done. With the main menu, we've used it as a spot to have our lunch, our weekly specials, events in one spot. And then we've also got a doggy dinner and everything oh, else darling. in one place. Well, it looks very smart, I must say. It's just really put all the ideas in one space and it's so much easier for the team. Good. I'm really mm. pleased. To help unify the bedrooms and the new branding, I've refurbished two rooms on a budget. A fresh scheme and new layout open up space. And themed dog accessories help create a quality identity and a functional room perfect for guests with pets. Now this is a room I'm very pleased with. Keep it simple. I'm a great believer in that. I love. I love these doggy cushions oh. too. The dog's peeking. I know, isn't it nice? It's just stunning. Oh, good. I want to come and stay in the hotel. I feel as if it's completely where we want to go. I have to say, you know, you had to take a lot in that first day, and I think the fact that you've dealt with it with such grace is really a testament to how successful you could be. I was determined. Just needed that little push. Nina's learning fast. <laughs> and showing initiative by adding value to the experience, leading guests with Buddy on one of her recommended walks but I want to know if she's now leading her team. Hi, darling. Hi, Alex. How are you? OK, thank you. So, everyone seems quite cheerful at the moment. I mean, it seems to be quite nice and calm. Everyone's in a good mood. Yeah, Nina's definitely got her zing back. It's great to see. And we're obviously picking up on that, and it's making us want to be here. When did things start getting better here? Uh, definitely after we were, we were all sat out at the back and had that staff meeting, we knew where Nina wanted to go with the business. We knew what she wanted us to do. Good. Well, I really hope it works. I mean, I'm so happy that it, it seems to be going better. I just hope she's impressing the all-important guests as well. It's been a lot better than I thought it was going to be, actually. The whole area of the pub is open to the dogs. So in the dining room, the bar area, it's really handy that the dogs can stay with us. <laughs> Don't laugh, because then you'll fall. <laughs> I've actually really enjoyed it. It's the first time for me and Brandy, and we've never been away on a dog's holiday, so it's been lovely. Everything's been really nice. A pat on the back for Nina. But some pats are more welcome than others. Nina, have you got a hose? Where are we? Oh. Right, you walk at the back. Yeah. Thanks! <laughs> right, I'm going to let you go. Oh, my God, look. You're like, hello, everybody. Oh, you're for something. Ah! Like a Dalmatian. Are oh, they good? Okay. Wipe it off on the ground. Okay. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm ever so glad. Oh, my God. <laughs> anybody like a dog? No, not today. Thank you. Thanks for asking, but no. A third of pet owners who holiday in the UK bring along their pets. Undercover guest Gracia knows it's one of the fastest growing and highly lucrative sectors of the travel market. The dog has really become part of the family now. It's just like a child in a way, and people just don't want to go anywhere without a dog. So do you think that this the strategy that we've pursued with Nina is one where that she could actually maximise her revenue? I think it's very clever, very smart. We've done some research on this, and people who have a dog and go to a place, they will not go anywhere else. They will stay, and therefore they would possibly spend about 30% more than any normal guests. With the future of the Grove at stake, it's time to reveal my mystery guest. 
Has Nina secured a spot on Gracia's prestigious list of dog-friendly hotels? I'm really grateful to all of you for coming and helping us road test this concept. But I do have a surprise for you. Grazia, who came and stayed last night, is the CEO of Pets Pajamas, a company that specialises in helping you find holidays for you and your pets. Oh, wow. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Nina, I just really want to say you're doing a great job. It's just a really lovely place to be where you feel really relaxed and where your dog is just as loved as everyone else is. Nina, we will be delighted to have you on our website. And not only that, I think we can send you a lot of business, okay. which I think you really deserve. Oh, are you oh, just oh, 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 so oh, 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 Well done. Why did you do that to me? <laughs> <laughs> Nina's worked incredibly hard and she's made a massive change. So you deserve to be successful, darling. Mm. And I love working with someone who's so energetic and able. So good luck to you. All Nina's efforts could be about to pay off with the opportunity to lead and focus her team on a new direction. My parting words are just to make sure you don't give up on the staff meetings. There's such a difference in the atmosphere in this place now that the team feels like more involved in it. You've worked really incredibly hard and I'm very, very impressed at you. Thank you. Thank you so much. In many ways, Nina's become my star pupil. She's become the manager she always wanted to be. She's a really good leader, and she's managing to take her team along with her, which is so important in an establishment like this. Not only that, but she's fallen in love with her business again. I'm so happy to see it. Now all we need is a couple of months of really good money-making behind her to see if her strategy was the right one to follow. Alex has made me find myself again, find that confidence. I'm pretty certain she saw something from the outset. God knows what, because it's certainly in a state. But I think she saw something and, and has really given me the confidence back to actually push this forwards. We're in a good place. We're looking forward to summer. And let's go strong into winter again, with lots of muddy dog walks this time. <laughs>